This is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Now, your host, James Just. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. We have John Cameron to your left and Leon to your right. Um, so let's start right off. Public health or politics? The uh, There was an article in, God, the Free Beacon, about how an influ- a medical journal was using... How, how do we want to phrase this, John? Is... Uh, pseudo... Uh, let me see. No. Uh, political policy as science. Well, just you, you can tell everybody how worthless it was by, by letting people know who paid for it. Uh, it was... Uh, the, the studies were funded by uh, George Soros Open Society. Open Society um, Foundation. Yeah. And so I guess the idea of it, was it in the Lancet? And see, the Lancet used to do really good work, which is annoying the heck out of me. Um, so I, apparently uh, what, what they did is publish a bunch of uh, political um, viewpoints and progressive, and I hate to call them progressive, because how can going back to the autocratic rule of kings be progress? I don't, I don't get this. Um, they published them as um, uh, worthwhile in pursuing for health reasons. For example, the New Green Deal. Another example was uh, uh, getting rid of uh, the, the ban on public funding for uh, um, abortions or Abortion, federal funding yes. for abortions. Yes. Um, and, and, and I forget, there were so many ridiculous ones. Basically, it was, it was a blank check for the, for the socialist communist agenda. I refuse to call them progressive because it's not progress. And labeling it uh, needing to be done because it will provide health benefits. Well, and I was thinking asserting, to myself, hmm? Just asserting that it's going to provide health benefits. Asserting that it's going to end. Actual yeah. science that it's actually going to provide health benefits. It's just, ah, we were just going to assert that if you spend more money here, health benefits will magically materialize. Well, and here's the weird thing. It, it, there's been all sorts of studies done that, that are statistically and scientifically valid that the places in the world where people are the healthiest um, and live the longest and have the... Um, most, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, fulfilled lives are anywhere where there's capitalism and, and the least restrictive form of democracy. So how in the hell you could say, and you just go around the globe, globe and go Hong Kong, Singapore, and Singapore's got a caveat because you don't even want to throw chewing gum on the sidewalk there because they'll beat you with a cane. But I mean, you know, um, if, you go around, if you go around the world, and, and look at those things or have some pot in your pocket and, you know, they might put you to death. But, I mean, if, if you just point to where people are the healthiest in the world over and over and over again, it's been wherever there's the, the, the least intrusive government and the most free reign of capitalism. And so how you can turn around and say we're going to implement command economy and somehow that's going to make pe- people healthier. It just makes me nuts. And every place command economies have been put in place, I mean, 50 million people died in communist China, uh, 6 million people in the pogroms in the Ukraine alone. I mean, over and over and over again, how anybody can look at history and decide that, that people are healthy or when, when um, autocrats, when, when people in power tell them how to lead their lives is beyond me. Anyway, I, I'll stop talking now. I think Leon has something to say. So no, I mean, you, you, just, you just mentioned that you, the, about looking at history. It is not a matter that they don't look at history. They want us to look at the history they want us to look at. I mean, one of the things they mentioned is racism, that they, all of the George Floyd riots were okay, that was wonderful, and that kind of stuff and things like that. Their racism is now a public, a public health issue, according to them. And this is, this is the kind of thing. The left is now infecting all of society with their nonsense, okay? Whether it's, whether it's universities, whether it's, 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 it's science, whether it's the teaching of mathematics, whatever it is, the left is infecting it with their nonsense. And what is so amazing about this, these same people 
always call us who demand science and demand that things be accurate and clear. They call us science deniers. This mm. is the most amazing thing that you, you that, that that I see going on in society today. Now look at what's happening right now with our with the public schools. They will not open the schools, even though the science tells us that is fundamentally safe to do so. Mm. But the teachers now, the teachers unions in particular, who are representing the teachers, are demanding that they stay out of the school until they get vaccinated. When there is no science to say that the teachers have to be vaccinated before they return to the classroom. But you know who's suffering for this? Our kids. Yeah. Well, I'm, my kids are all grown now, but I have a grandchild who's not yet not yet in, in, um, in, in school. But the, but the point is, though, that the point is, though, science is not being infected with the nonsense of the left. Mm. This is insanity on steroids. And we've got to be very careful oh, what road we're going to go down in trying to find this... The, the, and trying to find this utopia that they left thing they could find for us. I uh, I, I want to well spoken, man, yeah, well spoken. It's it's funny which science they choose to take a look at. Um, I get uh, people almost physically attack me on occasions. Then they look at me and they go, oh, I wonder where he got all those scars. Maybe I shouldn't punch that little guy. Um, <laughs> and and the. Uh, they, it's about this global warming nonsense. Um, right. You know, right now we're, we're fixing to go into something called the Maunder Minimum, which is a, a very low period of sunspot activity, and we we're very well could face a, a little ice age. And they keep talking about the, the horrible rise in, in temperature, you know, caused by increase in greenhouse gases. And it's like 1.1 degree centigrade, depending on where they put their marker in the ground over a period of 75 years. Um, but what, what they don't say is, uh, oh, by the way, all of the uh, weather stations we have reporting are in heat sinks. They're all in cities. And um, cities are one and a half to two degrees warmer than the country where yes. they used to be. And they don't say if, if these things... Uh, don't agree with our model showing global warming, we turn that station off and turn one on and it does. So and when I bring this up to people, they look at me like, like I'm crazy because it's accepted science. Right. So accepted yes. by who? If you can't get a paper published anywhere to question it, um, if, if uh, the fact that you know 40,000 people with science degrees have published a paper with a model that does actually work based on, based on sunspot. I mean, it, but that because I sound like a nut when I talk about it because they've convinced people that that's the science. Right. So, but if if every single scientific fact in the world can be questioned and is questioned in labs, um, is questioned by by academics at the highest level. Gravity, is it is it a wave? Is it a particle? Is it da 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 da? The, the speed of light, which is firmly established, gets adjusted microscopically every once yes. in a while. Yes. So you know all of these things are open to discussion, but if it's something that the left has adopted, then it's established science. And if you disagree with it, you're a science denier. But in your case, the case you brought up, Leon. The whole world has their kids in school. Exactly. But not the United States. Exactly. And, and you, you know, you, you talked about the, the teachers wanting to have vaccines before they teach school. The exactly. LA, uh, um, the teachers union that represents LA teachers said they want kids to be vaccinated before they go to school. And there is no, not even a hint of science anywhere on the planet that says those little germ-infested uh, rug rats, this is one disease that kids don't carry. I mean, who, you know, I mean, when the, when the, yeah, exactly. when the mad scientists in the Chinese lab created this thing, apparently they forgot to make it affect kids. I mean, yeah, who figures? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's thing is bizarre. But it just shows the dangers of giving politics intervene in these basic life decisions, in the mm -hmm. daily life decisions. Now, we're going to skip this next story, but I will mention it. There is more than 200 anti-abortion bills sitting up in various state houses. And if we don't think, whether your views on abortion one way or the other, 
we have politicized the issue so much now where our healthcare decisions are now made in state capitals rather than in our homes. Yes, and, or, 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 in a doctor's, or in a doctor's office. Or in a yeah. doctor's office. It's, not between, yeah. it's no longer between you and your doctor. It's now between you, your doctor, and your politician. Yes. And, and that's the very dangerous. That's the very dangerous. Oh, it's hugely dangerous. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, and even um, you, you look at the politics involved in medicine, uh, and I, I get in big trouble. My wife actually works in healthcare, and she'd probably kill me if she heard me say this. She doesn't work in the clinical side. Um, people talk about socialized medicine. You know, and we need socialized medicine. We need socialized medicine. Um, actually, I won't talk about family members. I'll just say a person I know waited uh, six months for an artificial knee in England. Uh, and uh, was it nine or 11 weeks for a heart valve um, that she needed? Not my wife, somebody that we know very closely. And that's socialized medicine. And it's actually decent medicine, but it, it is uh, certainly, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, rationed. It's rationed. rationed. It is certainly rationed. And here's the other thing that people do not want to hear in the United States of America. Uh, a, a, uh, a nurse in, working in national health in England works about or makes about 33,000 pounds to start, which is about $40,000. That's an RN. Right. Your typical RN at Kaiser makes $111,000. So on and on and on and on, healthcare consumes 18% of the GDP, I think, something like that here. Yeah, somewhere around the yes. Somewhere around if, you, yes. if you look at one of the big reasons, it's one nobody wants to talk about. Their wages are something like 30, for, the, for a comparable job, 30 to 40% higher. So what people want to do is they want to take something, which, you know, I, if, if it wasn't for all the other money the government has wasted, we could easily support nationalized health care. If it wasn't for the, not that I'm saying we should do it, but yeah, I, can, I can tell you why they shouldn't do it. Back when yeah. they passed Obamacare, you know, I said, hey, I'm not getting fined. I'm going to go ahead and sign up for government health care. I've been three years waiting for my eyes to get fixed. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, yeah. well, it so it's rational. It, it's rational. But, 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 but everybody knows, okay, whenever the government become involved in anything in our lives, mm -hmm. they always mess it up. There's no, yeah. there's no doubt about that. Okay. No. Well, that whenever they become involved, global. this healthcare that they come in more and more, with more they're intruding more and more into our lives through healthcare. All it's going to do at the end is that all of us is going to be in misery in the healthcare industry mm. because this is what government does. Mm. They produce misery, mm. and if we don't control them, if we don't define their roles in society and clearly and very succinctly tell them what they can and cannot do, we will always end up with the misery of government on our hands. Look at the inner cities of America, and that should tell you everything you need to know about what happens when government become too involved in the lives of its citizens. Well, we politicized everything. The more we politicized our health care, the more we politicized our education, the more we politicized right. our electrical grid, if you want to go look at Texas, it's become less and less stable. Our electrical exactly. grid is less stable, our health care exactly. is less stable, and we've Interjected well, policy. Unstable. So, <laughs> and we've in interjected politics more and more. So, <laughs> but the question becomes who fact checks the fact checkers? With everybody mm -hmm. talking about lies and, you know, this candidate lies, that candidate lies, misinformation, but the fact checkers are as guilty as anybody is spreading misinformation. So, whose job is it to actually fact check the fact checkers? Mm. Well, I well, wish there were. Go ahead, Leon. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I was going to say about this, this, this whole, it, this whole issue arises out of this thing, thing that happened on, um, on Capitol Hill on, um, on January 6th. I mean, it is true. Whatever happened there was horrendous. Nobody's going to argue with, nobody's going to defend that. There's nothing to defend there. But out of that came such, I mean, on the very first day of that thing on, Jan, on, on January the 6th, there were so many horrible stories many of which have been proven to be false. And one of them, of course, was the, the supposed murder of Brian uh, Seknik. 
they, it was reported, and this is the first story I heard, that he was beaten by Trump supporter with a fire extinguisher, when none of that was true. According to Brian Sicknick's brother, he texted him the night before, and he told, he told him he was fine, he was a little bit shaken by the whole, uh, the whole event and everything and stuff like that. But then sometime that night, he ended up in the hospital, he died subsequently. subsequently. But the point is, though, the media love these kind of stories. They love these kind of stories because if it bleeds, it leads. Mm -hmm. If it burns, it earns. And if it's race, well, it's in your face. Mm -hmm. And they love these stories. And no matter what it is, whether it's true or not, they will perpetuate that lie for as long as they can keep going. And even after the lie is exposed, they will never post a retraction. They'll put something on page six or, some, in, or, or in passing somewhere but they'll never give it the time that they gave to the original lie. Hmm. And this is what is wrong with our society right now. Nobody is truly, whenever there's a false story out there, nobody is standing up and telling CNN and MSNBC, hey, you got to do something about these things. They just keep going to the next story. They just keep going to the next lie. I, I absolutely, Leon, well spoken. Uh, I, I was in publishing and I heard... Uh, you know, if it if it bleeds, it's leads. If it bleeds, it's leads. But I hadn't heard if it burns, it it earns. Um, and you know, you, what did you say? If it's race, it's in your face. It's race yeah. is in your face. Yeah. So here, here's I I would love to just like do a little uh, uh, fact check on a couple of things. I'm going to throw out at you. True or false? There is much greater incidence of domestic violence on Super Bowl Sunday. True or false? What do you guys think? I think that's false. It's false. Uh, there's no evidence of it. It just got out there, and and the the uh, uh, I don't want to call them liberals. What the the commies just repeated over and over again. Uh, <laughs> there's no truth to it at all. Uh, how many people have heard that uh, you're more likely for a criminal to take your gun away and use it on you than you are than you are to use it in self-defense? How many of you have heard that? That having a having a a gun in your home is dangerous because it's more likely, likely that you'll shoot yourself or the criminal will take it away from you or a kid will kill themselves with it than, than to, uh, That's than to prevent crime. Have, have we heard this before? Of course yeah, we've I've heard, heard that many, many times before, but I even know it started about 25 years ago by the, yeah. those gun control um, yeah, yeah. And, so, and, and the truth is just the opposite. 2.3 million uh, uh, crimes are prevented by gun owners sure. every year. 2.3. Yeah. That doesn't mean they point a gun at somebody. The fact that they have a gun will prevent yes. somebody who doesn't have a gun from... Because even if you got a gun, you don't want to face somebody with a gun. You want to face people without a gun. So exactly. on and on and on, all of these stories uh, just happen. They're entrenched. They become part of the fabric of the loony left. Um, and, and like you said, they don't ever become retracted or go away. Right. And and even like I'm I'm uh, of the Vietnam era, um, the uh, the great Tet Offensive, that the the uh, and I'm not saying we should have been in Vietnam, should have definitely been in Cambodia because if we were four million people, would still be alive and not rotting in unmarked graves. But um, the great Tet Offensive that the U.S. press portrayed as a, as a great victory for North Vietnam. Yeah. It was a horrible loss for them that took them like two years to recover from because they stood up and fought, which they they weren't designed to do. Yeah, right. It's portrayed in in the media uh, as a horrible loss. I mean, over and over and over again, I absolutely agree. Those things become the fabric of common knowledge. And like that's, was it seven, 16, whatever crap that they're actually teaching in schools now, it suddenly become part of school curriculum that the, sure. the true date of birth of the United States of America was when slaves were first brought here. I mean, that instantly somehow migrated from a, a immediately disproven diatribe by someone who wasn't fact checked at all into yes. fact that's taught in schools. All right, I'm done. I'm done being but, on my. But but my, the whole idea about the schools, though, if if we could stay there for a second, what is going on in the school? Again, here is the government again. The government yeah. at work here, okay, messing up the education for our children. But the whole idea, what's going on in our school right now, is not about propaganda. Yes, they wouldn't absolutely. teach these children reading, writing, and arithmetic. But every environmental crap, they will teach them. Yeah. Every 
social justice thing, they will teach them. You you know, there was this funny story, not this funny story, this actually happened actually. When the Green New Deal first came out, Diane Feinstein was talking to a teacher at some place and she had about 12 or 13 of, our, of, our, of the teachers, uh, the kids there. And these little kids, talking about the Green New Deal. They're talking about how the world is going to end in 12 years if we don't do something right now. Where did they get that from? These kids were like 10 years old or something. Where did they get that from? Where? Did they get that from some big scientific knowledge? No. Some teacher in that public school where they were at the time taught them this, this nonsense. And still, they keep going. Mm. So what's going on in public education today is nothing but propaganda. And there's nobody fact-checking what they are teaching our children, which is dangerous for our future. No, it's, yeah, it's worse than dangerous. I, yeah, I completely yeah. agree. But hey, guess what, Leon? The state of California, they are on the case. The the state legislature has is, has introduced a bill, AB, what is it, 1379, that would prohibit false campaign speech. <laughs> well, so... <laughs> well, I, I, 60 days before an election. Well, you know, because you got to be able to lie before that. It's fine. <laughs> Just not 60 days before an election. So, so here's the deal, then. That means we will see no uh, campaign ads starting at, at day 59 before the election because <laughs> every single piece of campaign dogma put out by either party is lies. I mean... Obviously, yes. Yeah. Well, at, so, at, at, at best, they're half-truths, right? <laughs> at best, at best, yes. Well, no, I mean, at best, I'd like to see one that's even got half of it truth. I, I want to I go back to the education thing because... The education thing is, is um, you know, it, there is some hope. Yeah, this, this pandemic has done something that um, nobody was able to do, which is uh, demonstrate to, to parents that there is an alternative. And I'm um, not certain, but I, I think we're going to see, even in the glorious state, or especially in the glorious state of California, because, I don't know, are, are your kids in Sac City Unified, um, James? Where are your kids? My kids are grown. 22 uh, I thought now. you had so. Yeah, I thought you I had got grandchildren. second my generation. Grandchildren are, my grandchildren are just about to hit school. Yes, they're. Uh, yeah. and they're and me too. Me upon, too. My kids, kids are growing on grandkids. I, not, not yet. In, not yet. I do have on. grandchildren so, in school, but they're in school in Southern California. Yeah. Well, oh, so okay. yeah, hopefully not LA school district because they'll need to they'll need to be vaccinated before they can go to school. But uh, they've done such a, a, a horrific job and exposed the teachers' unions, especially, where all they basically wrote Joe Biden's commie manifesto is was teachers unions because they bought and paid for his campaign um they've exposed themselves as being grossly incompetent um, yes completely unconcerned with the health of, and welfare of the children and more concerned with their own well-being uh and, and even though there is no scientifically valid risk they were still didn't have the chutzpah the cojones the guts whatever you want to call it to actually go into the classroom and do their job I think there's a chink in that armor now, finally, and maybe, uh, maybe we'll get a voucher passed in the state of California at some point. It'll get shot down by the, by the California Supreme Court and have to be go all the way up. But I think people are are so fed up with, uh, and and then they saw the people who could afford a little bit of technology. They saw them sitting at the school t uh, t at the kitchen table. Teaching yes. their kids off of free lessons off of YouTube and Open University and all the rest of that, we're getting a much higher education without the propaganda that you talked about, Leon, than they're getting sitting in the classroom. Sure. And I think, so, and I think I it is think turning, John. Some good, ben some benefit will come out of this. Uh, well, we I just really had, do. what is it, the Oakley School Board just resigned in mass because. In mass, they, yes. Because yes. they got caught on the camera, you know, kind of disparaging uh, parents. Parents. And, and the parents then, who pay the who pay, who's paying the taxes. And then the San Francisco school board has now just decided they're going to shelf the renaming program and concentrate on getting the the schools open mm -hmm. because the parents are starting a recall effort. Yeah, but so, you know that that San Francisco that San Francisco thing is so illuminative eh? when you think about it. Okay, the kids are not in school. Okay, they are not in school. They are not learning as they should. They get in this online crap that is is doing very little for them. But you know what the school board think is of high priority? We have to rename those buildings. We have to take away all of those people who are so offensive, you know, 
like Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. We have to we have to take those names off. This is going to harm our children. While our children are sitting at home and not learning, this was their priority. Well, I do. This is sickness. I do want to take a second to defend online learning because I've seen the diversity of responses to this. I've seen some children suffer without being in school, but I've also seen other children thrive not being in school, being in the online learning. And so what, if we, there's a lesson we should take out of this is that we need more diversity in our education mm-hmm. system. We need to focus on the individual more child, more not, not the system. It's not whether okay. they should be in school or whether they should be at home. It's what's the best way to teach little Johnny or little Susie. Hmm. James, I will accept. I will accept the the your 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 point on this, okay? But if, but I think I think the science is well is well documented that the average child do better where learning is occurring on in a campus environment where there are other kids to interact with. Even though I will accept your point that there are cases where a child will do better with online learning in the home. And that kind of, I accept the point. I do. I, I think we and, need to. And maybe I may be yeah. right. It, it, it speaks to more having more options available to be. And it may actually be, Leon, that maybe we need to refunction our school completely away from this factory model, and then maybe these kids who actually don't function in the schools now can actually function because it may be not actually the physical school. It may be that this factory model of education simply doesn't work for them, well, or like for me, like doesn't yeah. work. You know, you couldn't put me in a school with a thousand people. It was just the wrong environment. You get me yeah. in a school with fifty people, and I would have been fine. And so the, you need the right environment for the right children. And that, that's the only thing. I, I completely agree. There's kids who are suffering out of school, and we need to get them back into school. Sure, but, I think, but I think the kids Leon's who are thriving, point, we need to. I think Leon made a, made a point, uh, and, and I'm trying to make the point <laughs> with him, in that, that um, what the social fabric of our society is being destroyed by, um, by the lack of, I don't think we should call it um, social distancing. We should call it phys- physical distancing. But uh, human beings are pack animals, for the most yes. part. There are some. Yes. There are some people who are not. And and taking away their the little kids' friends and all the rest of this for no scientific reason, no reason whatsoever. The harm that's being done to the children as human beings, much less the ones who aren't good with technology. The harm that's being done to their educational path. That right. needs to stop. These freaking teachers need to, to suck it up, grow a pair, and get in the classroom and teach. And if not, quit and let somebody who's willing to do it get in there. And with, with that, doubt. John, we with are out doubt. of here. Thank, Thank you guys for joining us. Catch us next week here at Libertarian Counterpoint. You can catch all our shows at libertariancounterpoint.com. And thank you for joining us. And please remember to love everybody. This is Gail Morgan with Libertarian Counterpoint Productions. Knuckleheads of Liberty, Monday nights at 5.30 on Channel 17. Libertarian Counterpoint on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. on Channel 17. Also, you may catch our shows on YouTube, Facebook, and on other social media. Once again, thank you for watching Libertarian Counterpoint Productions.